Hello and welcome to Raising Those Spirits. I am your first host, Steve. Shouldn't say first host. I'm your... No, you can say first host. You're you're talking first. I'm the second host. No, wait. Okay, you're host one and I'll be host A. Okay, that's equal. I mean, you theoretically yeah. thought up this podcast, so you should definitely be either one or A. Okay, so you're one, I'm A. This is our second episode. What have you been doing since our first episode, Sam? What have I been doing? Oh my goodness, I went and I visited my mom and my dad. And my my sister, and my brother in law, and my nieces and nephews, or niece nieces and nephew. I only have one nephew on that side. So I had a lovely trip to our native homeland of New Jersey. That sounds you nice. You know what? I haven't I haven't yeah. been to New Jersey in a year and a half. I haven't been to Jersey since before all this started. Oh my goodness! Yeah, a lot of people don't like New Jersey, but I, I'll tell you, if you don't like New Jersey, I think you just haven't spent enough time in New Jersey. Is my personal opinion. I'm going to get a lot of flack for that. Uh, but New Jersey is great. I don't know what anybody else is talking about. You've just been that to the wrong sarc- part of New Jersey. Yeah. You know what it is? A lot of people complain that New Jersey smells really bad. And I will admit there are parts of the, the parkway and the turnpike that do smell really bad because they go through some heavily industrialized areas. But for the most part, New Jersey is very nice. I agree. New Jersey's actually got a lot going on. Yeah, so take that, haters. Everyone else, we didn't flee New Jersey because it was bad for or anything like that. No. No, I came up here because there was a, a room in an apartment that was available, and I thought, well, if I move out of my parents' basement, I'll probably have to get my life together. And that was like 12 years ago, and I guess things are going pretty well. Yeah. I have a job, I'm married, I got a kid. You have a have kid a and a podcast now. about that kid? I think, yeah. I have other podcasts, too. This is the only one that's actually like actively putting episodes out. My other Same. Podcasts. My Same. other podcasts are in development right now. More on that when they get developed. Mine are like all defunct at this point, which is sad. Maybe one day they'll come back. I mean, when this one takes off, everybody's wanting to get back on board that Steve train. It's a horrible phrase. What have you been doing this week? So we also, I mean, we put out our Mother's Day episode, but then real Mother's Day happened. So um, I saw my wife's family and, you know, we did Mother's Day for her. Um, There is some new trails, apparently, that our town built because, you know, we're up in the woods and the mountains. That go down like along uh, the river and stuff, and it's so we've been doing sunset walks a lot. After uh, we both get out of work, we grab the kid and we go for a nice long walk through the woods as the sun is setting, and it's you know kind of that magical kind of spooky time, and it's been really really nice. Oh, that does sound lovely. I live in a kind of urbany suburb, and it's okay. You know, there's some good walks here, but I don't have any, like, mountain trails. Yeah, I mean, it's like, it's flat enough that we can put his stroller on it. So it's not like a full mountain trail. We have mountain trails if we want to drive, like, five minutes, but this is nice. We can literally, like, from our house, do the whole walk, get, like, a mile, mile and a half in, and just kind of be in the woods for a good portion of it. Oh, that's nice. Yeah, it is. It's really nice. You done anything spooky? What have I done that's spooky? So we have done our our plant shopping for the fall. No, not for the fall. The Sam, stop it. I mean, you could be prepping for the fall. I uh, I finally bought pumpkins because I didn't get mine planted in time because we had a crazy late snowstorm, and uh, oh yeah, that, that killed really everyone's wet. starter crops. So I bought some developed pumpkins. So <laughs> I'll have fall planting. So technically. You could be, you could recover from this. Well, okay, but well, I'll, I'll start over. So we did our purchasing for our summer garden. So I have a little bit of um, green space in the back of my house. Uh, and one of the things, you know, I always like to grow is herbs. Because uh, I do a lot of cooking. Uh, and what I ended up picking up was from Etsy. You can find these all over Etsy. But they are plant markers that look like headstones. So it'll be like a little headstone in on it. It'll say rosemary or oregano. And I got a whole ton of those. 
uh, for my preferred my preferred herbs. Uh, so that I've been, I'm going to be planting uh, kind of an herb graveyard, if you will. Um, I'll get some some pictures up on the Instagram as soon as I have that put together this weekend. Um, but yeah, I really like them. There, you can find these all over Etsy. The ones that I got were from a, a group called Death by Design. I think was the name of the group, and they are out of Toronto. So I was able to order them. They got to me in about a week. They're about five bucks each, but they're they're sturdy plastic. They actually were a lot higher quality than I expected them to be. They're all 3D printed. And they're really nice. I think you could probably paint them. The ones I got were all sort of like a slate gray. Um, so they look like headstones. So the, that's good for me. But I, I think you could, you could probably do a little bit more with them if you wanted to. But yeah, so I'm looking forward to having my spooky herb garden. Ooh. That's great. <laughs> No, I love yeah, them. You sent me a they're picture. Really they're very cute. I, I'm honestly thinking of buying them because I always just use like the actual like tag that comes with the plants and stick it in the dirt next to whatever I'm growing. And uh, my wife did buy me nice wooden placards that go in uh, the ground as well. But we're getting to the point where we have so many plants, um, I might have to get something special for the herbs themselves because we just have too much to keep track of so those could be a cute little way to keep it spooky because i've already been adding some spooky stuff myself mm -hmm. like what well we did my veggie garden isn't happening in a the big way i had wanted this year i've been focusing more on uh getting a lot of permanent perennial flowers and stuff in because if i get that done this year then it's done forever and you know, then I can work on a bigger garden next year for veggies. But I did notice that a lot of the planters and stuff I built on the deck, we have some large planters, we have uh, railing planters, we have all that stuff. Uh, between the flowers, um, since not everything is fully grown in yet, there was a lot of like space, a lot of like dirt and just gaps where you could see. So I found online. Did you see Princess Mononoke? No, I've never seen it. Okay, you might have seen what I'm talking about. They're not, like, exclusive to Princess Mononoke. They're called Kodama. They are these little green, or they're white, uh, like, Japanese forest spirits. They have, like, the big eyes and bulbous heads and little tiny white bodies. They are incredibly cute, and they glow in the dark. So they are just these cute, yet still spooky little forest spirits that you can kind of place among all your plants and in your planters and stuff and add a little bit of, you know, character. And then at night, they uh, they glow in the dark. They absorb the sun's rays all days, and they add a spooky little green glowing effect to all your plants. And I think they are incredibly cute, and I smile every time I see them. Oh, these are really cool. I think I might pick some of these up, too, so I can hide them around when we do a little more planting. You know, these would be really good for indoor plants, too, because they I, look like they're they're just the right size. I have others that are not these for indoor plants, and they are the perfect size, and they are adorable. I have a whole set of cats, because we are cat people, that hang out and protect <laughs> all my plants. But then I figured for the outdoors, I want to start really putting things like these around, mainly because I planted a bunch of marigolds and I realized it was a big, awkward gap at the end. And I was like, I got I to gotta fill that. What could I possibly put there? And then I saw these guys like the same day and I was like, these would fit perfectly in little gaps like that. And I don't have to go replant stuff. So they're a good little cheat and they make me smile. And from there, we've kind of been looking at a lot of similar things we can do with our property because we have the woods and such on our property and for mother's day i bought my wife some cute uh like spooky forest gnomes and stuff because we have big like little statues like that all over the property already and we like our goal is to we are cutting like a trail through our woods that you can walk and i want to have like when you look like you don't really notice but like be between like up from like a tree stump or a fallen log or something just like you can see the eyes staring out at you or like kind of have that <laughs> all these statues if you look around or watching you but you don't necessarily immediately notice them so things like green men and statues like that these little kodama guys i would love to get a few bigger ones that were like 
12 to 18 inches high that I could put throughout the woods, but I have yet to find them. Did you play... I, don't th- I think we've talked about this. You didn't play Breath of the Wild, did you? I did. Oh, you did? So you know the little... um. Yes, yes, these the are very similar guys. to those. That's something I'm always looking for. So if anybody's a fan of um, Breath of the Wild, you'll know that there's these little little plant creatures. What are they called? They always go, yeah, when you find them. They aren't necessarily um, exclusive to uh, Breath of the Wild. They are part of the larger Zeldaverse, I believe. Oh, okay. So if anybody's a Zelda fan, you, you've come across these little creatures in the wild and they have leaf faces. And they just are, they're little, like, little, like, mischievous little plant creatures. I would love to get a couple of those from my backyard. But from what I've seen of them on Etsy, they're, like, they end up being, like, $10 each if you want to buy one. Because I don't think there's any officially licensed version of, like, a garden gnome version of these guys. So I don't want to pay that much for each one. They are called Koroks, by the way. Koroks? Well, I should have known that. I always want to call them Octoroks, and I know those are actually the, the octopus monsters. But yeah, I spent a lot of time playing Breath of the Wild uh, throughout the pandemic, so I've become I became very fond of the, the Koroks. I'd love to have my own little Korok forest at some point. I have been... that. I actually have an idea for that, because I have been looking into... Uh, we have a wood boiler on our property that can be used to heat the house and the previous seems like a lot of work (laughs) yeah i i chopped a lot of wood we use it as our backup but the previous owner uses their primary so there's just a lot of tree stumps around our property where like he just took down a tree and chopped it up and it didn't do anything with the stump so i was looking into awesome things to do with tree stumps and downed logs and stuff because I have an abundance of them. And there's so many cool spook- spooky things that people do online if you just like Google it that I'm very excited about. But turning one of them into one of those would actually be a possibility and it could be incredibly cute and work with my kind of forest spirit aesthetic that I'm going for. <laughs> I love I love how much just space your backyard is. Like the the one time I got to your house before everything went to hell, it was just it was so massive. It was just so much space. I was like, oh my god. We've done there's so much you can do with this space. We've done so much since you've been here. I, I'm so excited that we both got our second shot today because we'd love to have you guys down to see what we've done, um, and just to see you. Oh yeah, of course. No, it'd be good for for us to get together. <laughs> uh, well, speaking of meeting up that has to do with the podcast, actually, I found a kind of spooky activity if you're interested. I'm always interested and if in spooky any, activity, Steve. If anyone is, you know, in the Rhode Island, Massachusetts area, this is going on until July, actually. So it is, it's not fully spooky. I think it's like more fantastical, but like for little kids, kind of that magical spooky. Um, oh, okay. So the Providence Zoo, and I know it's not called the Providence Zoo. It's named after like some Roger, Roger Williams, Williams Zoo. Zoo is doing a Asian Le- Lantern Festival, Ooh. where they have like the big paper mache lanterns made of all the different animals, and at night and slash the evening they light them all up, and you walk the trails through the zoos like the sun as it's getting dark, and all the big like lant and stuff are lit up and that seemed spooky ish that thought it could be fun you know, like you've got the animals coming out of the bushes and the trees and you know the sun's oh, going yeah, down go. yeah that so great. we uh we're season pass holders if you want to meet up i feel like it's about halfway between both of our houses almost oh okay and all of our listeners should come too yeah i that's the thing it's open till july so <laughs> by the time this comes out you have plenty of time to look into it and check it out but at least go on their website and look at it the the, the lamps came out really awesome we saw them during the day we took our son a little while ago and uh they looked really cool i, I can't wait to see them lit up nice so I think we should get on to um, the spirit that we're raising. For Absolutely. This episode. We get into the theme of the episode. This week's theme is aliens. Yeah, we buried that. We buried that pretty deep into this one. Although I guess I do title everything with the episode topic. I guess nobody's going to be totally shocked when they come around and they see that we're talking about talking about aliens this week. 
Which I've got thoughts on, but uh, maybe we should get a drink first. Oh, what are you drinking, Steve? I am drinking a Mars Explosion. <laughs> it is one ounce vodka, two ounces of orange juice, ice, quarter ounce of white rum, grenadine, and then an orange slice and a maraschino cherry. It is very light and refreshing. It is very summery which uh, works with the nice weather we've been having here. And it is delicious. Might I say it sounds out of this world? Yeah, it's pretty no. good. <laughs> yeah, was that okay? Yeah, no, no, no. Your pun was great. I'm just like, you know, it's not the best drink I've had, but it's definitely a good drink. But the pun worked. The pun worked. I give you 9 out of 10 on the pun. <laughs> Oh man, no, that sounds uh, that sounds quite good. Uh, for my uh, drink that I'm raising this week, I went with the green sangria, oh, ho, 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 which I'm not actually drinking at the moment because, like you said, we just got our second COVID shots, uh, and they tell you you gotta you gotta hydrate. You don't want to. Yeah, full disclosure, <laughs> I, I tried this like a f over the weekend. It's. I got my COVID shot literally like an hour and a half ago. I'm not drinking. <laughs> anyway, so for the green sangria, ho, ho, ho. What you're basically doing is you're making your favorite sangria and you're adding, you can either add blue curacao or you can add some blue food coloring, which will give it kind of a, a, a greenish hit, um, a greenish color when it hits that orange juice. Uh, so the recipe I've got, it is a one 750 milliliter bottle of white wine. They recommend Riesling. So just a, you know, regular, that's just regular white wine bottle size. Half a cup of orange juice, one tablespoon of your blue curacao, or a few drops of blue food coloring. Things to remember, blue food coloring goes a very, very long way, so you don't want to overuse it. Half a liter of lemon lime club soda, one green apple chopped one lime sliced, frozen green grapes for serving, and mint for a garnish to give you a delightfully alien-colored sangria. I would recommend, you know, if you have a preferred white sangria recipe, you can always just go ahead and try and turn it green because if your sangria is delicious, you're going to be having a you're, you're going to be having a good time. Yeah, you know, we had um, a couple of friends over. The other week for a backyard sangria party on one of the really nice days, and I will tell you, I am I am psyched that we are in the sangria season. Yes, yeah, I've already started making some. Oh, good. Right now? No, no. Right now we're podcasting, but like over the weekend, I did, and it was very nice. Oh, good. Yeah, no, you should focus on the podcast. I should focus on our sound levels. Yes. <laughs> Future Steve oh, will Steve. hate me if I do not. You know what? But future Steve's problems are future Steve's problems. Get that is current true. Steve. And you're doing a great job. You're doing a great job with these audio levels. Everybody, everybody who's in your car listening to this episode right now, you gotta you just clap for Steve. He's doing a great job with the audio levels. I'm trying. I thought I uh I edit with Adobe Audition. And mm -hmm. I've been editing for years for film with Adobe Premiere, and I assumed foolishly it would just be the same program just without video and it is not so oh, no no it's similar but uh it's not nearly as elegant so adjusting these audio levels after the fact is not my favorite thing i've ever done <laughs> but that's my problem well, yeah i know you're doing great it's great so we're talking on the topic of aliens as we raise our pretend glasses to our our alien overlords. What spooky alien thing did you uh, did you read this week, Steve? So I read "My Teacher Is an Alien" by Bruce Coville, which was very mm. exciting for me because I think I've been trying to read this book since the fourth grade. Uh, this book came out when I was in grade school and. It was, it's like when Bruce Coville like took off. Uh, he's known for this and many other big popular spooky series. He was kind of like the rival to R.L. Stein back in the day. And every single kid in my class read this book. 
And I grew up going to the library all the time because the library is free. And I grew up in a fairly wealthy town. So between our school library and our public library, we had like every book you could ever want. It was great. But I could never get my hand on this one. I, it was always like a wait for it, like 10 kids deep. So, and eventually by the time it got around, the fad had kind of moved on to the next thing and I just never got around to it. But it was always one that I thought of. And now I finally read it at the age of 36. You know, it's funny you say that. It's definitely, I, I've never read it. So I'm, I'm going to be hearing about it from you. But uh, it is another one of those books. I always remember the cover of it. Yes. I feel like I saw the cover a lot. It was definitely one of those big, popular, non-Goosebumps, but of the Goosebumps era books. Yeah, I remember seeing, I remember that scene on the shelf all the time. Yeah, all four of the books in this series, I remember their covers like viscerally. Like they are so ingrained in my head, in like my child brain that is still there and i'm really annoyed actually because so this book is actually still incredibly popular and bruce Coville's still incredibly popular which i love to hear but they've given it like a modern cover that is not that cover sam oh no is I, it like less scary or what did they it's do? not scary at all it's cartoony it is oh. like a Kim Possible looking like high school or elementary school boy and girl and then like a monster shadow on the wall and they are holding a flashlight. It's not two kids sitting outside of a classroom looking photorealistically horrified as their teacher pulls off his face at all. So they did this a couple of years ago with um, remember the scary stories books. Yes. Which is something I imagine we will be talking about before. I'm too much positive. So they those books as everybody remembers had that terrifying terrifying artwork it was really you know one, one of the draws first... yeah it was really one of the first introductions for me anyway to like really truly horrifying illustration those those books are absolutely gorgeous and they put out an edition a couple of years ago that had updated you know they you know, they put it on the cover. It's like updated artwork, and it was nearly was not nearly as scary as the original stuff. And it's, it was clearly designed to be less scary. And I was like, that is such a that so misses the point. Why yeah. would you ever bother trying to like tone these down? They're supposed to be they're scary. scary stories. Like you're already primed just from seeing the pictures. I l- literally those pictures are partially why I went into art as a profession Mm. like for real like i saw them and they just the the visual medium worked so well that i wanted to create films and movies and things on video that captured that feeling but there's a direct correlation between those books and like what i wanted to do with horror no, I'm looking up the um the original version and the current version. Yeah, they really really cartooned it. They really made it less scary. But how was the book? Like once you got into it, how was the um how was the book itself? Okay, so I am going to start it is uh for kids. The kids in the book are in 6th grade and the age range is from like 4th to 8th graders mm-hmm. for reading. I enjoyed it. I had fun. I had a lot of fun with it. Uh, even as an adult, it was not overly childish. It, okay. had, I have a kind of a pros li- and list here. I don't really have any cons. It has a female protagonist, which I love. Uh, looking forward to kind of giving my son books that also have strong female protagonists as well and making sure that there's that kind of representation. And also, which is nice to see that kind of representation. The, the other kid in the book is a boy but he is definitely her sidekick which is a just nice switch around from what you normally see uh she also constantly calls out the men and the boys in the books for being chauvinistic and just gendered hypocrisy and how it affects her middle school life all the time and for a book that came out in like 1993 i find that to be pretty awesome wow they're really hitting it like i mean like they're they're really hitting the um social commentary there yeah and i'm like for like a white male author in 1993 awesome did not expect that doesn't really affect the book so much i just you know 
it holds up. It's not the opposite where sometimes I go back and read something and I'm like, oh, this is this is so cringeworthy. Mm. It was very pleasant surprise. I like the book. Uh, for anyone who doesn't know, it's about a girl who their her favorite teacher disappears over spring break, and the kids all mm. come back and they're supposed to be putting on a play and she has mysteriously retired there is now a new man running the class and he has canceled the play and he is very weird and she is able to find out through happenstance that he is an alien but no one's gonna believe a sixth grader about this so she's got to recruit the kids in her class to figure this out find her teacher and expose this alien because she finds out that he is going to be abducting five kids from her class in like two weeks to go back to his planet with. He's going to be taking the best kid in class, the worst kid in class, and the three most average kids in class. Oh, okay. So he's like an alien statistician. Kind of, yeah. Like they want to study like human. So they're taking, you know, the best, the worst, and some middle in like upcoming humans. And I loved the weird social aspect that that brought to it because at a certain point in the story all the kids know and so they they know that he's planning on abducting the best the worst and the three most average kids in class so like the worst kid in class knows he's the worst kid in class he's trying harder the two best kids <laughs> in class are like starting to like start fights and like get questions wrong so they go down the list but the really fun social aspect is all the middle of the road kids are freaking out not knowing what to do <laughs> cuz they're like how average am i when i get called on do i answer the questions correctly do i answer them wrong what's my best shot for not being considered the most average kid and it's like this really cute thing where you're just watching these kids just be like super stressed being like how do i not be average oh my goodness yeah no, that's funny when i was in high school my high school did rankings which i think less and less schools do now but my ranking put me really directly, like, actually, I was the middle student of the entire class. I was tied with two other people. So there were three discernibly <laughs> the most average kids. I would have been taken by this alien. You may have been studied have been, by this alien. I'd have been taken. Yeah, you you were absolutely going on that ship. So oh, I hope it was nice, at least. It actually turns... So the ending is actually kind of sad uh not for kids i think but for an adult who like realizes broad spectrum it's kind of sad um, oh no what happened so spoiler alert her sidekick has a really crappy home life uh his mom died a long time ago and his dad just ignores him and so he is like the sci-fi geek and he's the initial kid that believes her because he's really into like space and stuff and he ends up saving the alien and being abducted going with him because anywhere is better than home which is Dude, you just brought me down like three levels damn damn right like and i i feel like fourth to seventh graders aren't gonna like pick up on just how devastating that is but um, it gets less devastating because I, re I didn't read the next three books, but I read like the wikis for the next three books. And he comes back at the end of the next book with the alien to save the Earth. So. OK, so that's good. Yeah. Wow. OK, that would have been a it's real a, downer it, if that was. The it's a story. roller coaster. And in the book, she's just like, oh, I hope he's just really enjoying himself because he had a theory that they were good aliens and uh, they you know, this wasn't a malicious thing. And she was like, you have no backing on that. But he, uh, he, he was kind of able to prove that the teacher wasn't a bad guy. And so like in her mind, he's off having his space adventure. I'm like, but as an adult, I'm just like, Oh my God, this kid's life is so sad. So what, what's the lesson here? Like what's the moral lesson that you, you, you've taken from this book? <sighs> man because like it's i like i don't know just like hearing hearing just now like 
you figure that all these kids books of a certain age range from a certain time, like they're all going towards a certain moral lesson or that might be my expectation. Maybe this is just a fun romp. I, yeah, it seems maybe it's that you have the power to change your, your circumstances. I think it's that you don't need adults to do everything for you because the whole point of the book is no adult will believe them. So, they, okay, so self reliance, self reliance. So she's got to kind of really put it out there to this one kid and kind of gain his trust, and they start to work together. And then it's like this thing where, like, they end up the third person they recruit is like the school bully who always beats up the second kid, but he believes them. And so, like, then he's in on it, and then the whole class gets in on it. It's about how these kids need to figure out how to take down this alien and save themselves because not a single one of the adults believe them. So I think that might be it, how, like, you're getting to the age where you're old enough to kind of start taking responsibility for yourself. That's that's all I can think. Otherwise, I just thought it was a fun romp. Okay, so I'm, I'm desperately, I was desperately hoping that there was some... <laughs> some positive that comes from this kid being like, you know what, my my family is so terrible. I'm literally better off going off with this alien to space and just hoping things work out. That poor kid. Yeah. I'm glad he comes back as the hero. That's so nice to hear. Yeah, he ends up saving um, the Earth in book four, but like holy crap, if that if there wasn't a book two, three, or four, it would have just been like Oh, that's a lot. That's heavy. That's a heavy ending. Wow. And I mean, like, you got to imagine, like, when it first came out, you know, kids reading it for the first time didn't, might not have realized that they were getting it on a a series. Yeah. Like, you almost had to do that to be like, uh, if you don't want children to be devastated, you're going to have to give me a sequel. Sure, because it's like, um, I don't know. I mean, I guess this isn't as extreme, but imagine if, um, you know, Infinity War. You know, if you'd gone seen Infinity War, and then that was it. You know, everybody, everybody just you know half of them died out of existence. They yeah, lost. half of them died. Like, what if they? I think it would have been really cool if they had they had left it like that for a while. Like, oh yeah, then we did like six more movies before we addressed the fact that every, half of the planet died. They should have left him out in space for a few more books. You know, the fact that he came back after the at the end of the next book. Missed opportunity. You should you should really leave kids hanging. Well, I mean, make them wonder. He comes back at the very end of the second book, so you really don't get to hear his story until the third book. So that was a really good setup for by the third book. All right, so this guy Bruce knew what he was doing. Yeah, Bruce knew what he was doing because the second one, the main character isn't the girl from the first one. It is the bully from the first one who uh, who figures out there's another alien and is trying to you know, do it on his own, and he eventually has to get saved by the girl from the first one, and then both of them need to get saved, and that's when kid number two shows up, so. How many books did you say there were? There were four books in this four series? Four books in this series. And then it's like telling the epic saga of a, like, a big intergalactic invasion of Earth? Kind of, yeah. Only the first one seems to be, like, a horror book. Oh, okay. Uh, yeah, that was the thing. I was like, the first one is, like, spooky. It has, like, you know, a very Goosebumps feel. But reading all of the all the wiki entries for the other books, I was just like, oh, this goes off into, like, a weird sci-fi. Like, it goes hard into sci-fi and, like, actual alien stuff. And it seems to go farther away from, like, the horror spooky aspect of it. All right. I think I'm going to check this book out. Yeah. I'm going to read this. I uh I enjoyed it. Uh, my local library had it, but I also I mean you can find it online. There's there's sites that just have it. <laughs> Support your local library. Support your local library. There was actually a line. I had to wait in line at my library to get it, which was also nice. And then they were like, "There's people waiting for the book. Are you done with it?" And I was like, "Also nice. I like that kids are still reading this book." I was into the Bailey School Kid books. About this same time. Do you remember the Bailey School Kid books? I I don't. I don't at all. So that was like Vampires Don't Wear Polka Dots. I think that was the first one. I'm looking it up right now. 
Uh, but there was a whole basically. I recognize of like a, these covers. <laughs> yeah, it's like a weird school where the school is filled with monsters and aliens and different things who are all disguising themselves as um, people who either work or go to the school. Shall I move on to my pick this yeah, week? Yeah, what did what did you do this week, Sam? So this week I went with a, a picture book. So this is this is aimed uh, at a much younger audience. Um, I went with The X-Files, Earth Children Are Weird, which is part of the Pop Classics book series, which are books that are based on movies and TV shows. From all sorts of different times, they they've seen that they've got like Back to the Future, they've got Home Alone, they've got the the new Doctor Who, so like Thirteenth Doctor, the Jodie Whittaker Doctor. They have a a book, um, a big beautiful picture book versions of these movies. Uh, I have Earth Children Are Weird. It's one of my daughter's uh, favorite books. We sat down, we read it the other day, and she immediately wanted to read it again. So you know, this is a this is a real winner, at least in my house. And it follows the adventures of young Dana and Fox. So it's our favorite X-Files characters with their little kids uh, who are having a backyard camping sleepover at Dana's house. And Fox suspects that Earth has been invaded by aliens and they are investigating the the aliens that Fox believes has invaded in his backyard. Beautifully illustrated by Kim Smith. I definitely recommend checking out her other work. The drawings are absolutely gorgeous. Yes, I um, believe... I think we have the Buffy the Vampire Slayer one. Oh, yeah, that's right. There's a Buffy There's a Buffy one as well. So, really, the, uh, what, get, what this, this story gets to the heart of is just uh, not being afraid of the dark. Uh, you know, understanding that even though there's scary things in the dark, that it's not something that is there to hurt you. Although this book does have, you know, spoiler warning, spoiler warning, this one does have the twist where the aliens are, in fact, real. (gasps) So, you know, Fox is not off base. The the crux of the book is they're going around and exploring with their flashlights. They're finding the dogs. They're finding an owl out in the backyard. They're finding all the different things that are making these sounds. And it's such a, it's a fun, curious adventure. It's a, you know, a big... Yeah, you know, it's a picture storybook, so it's it's again a quick read. It's a good nighttime read, but it's definitely something that I could see. You know, it's the sort of thing that your kid would stay up reading with a flashlight underneath the covers, just because it has that sort of fun, spooky backyard vibe to it. It's an absolutely absolutely gorgeous book. Yeah, I'm looking at the art for it right now. I'm really digging the art style. This is really pretty, and I immediately get the the flashlight vibe that you said just from looking at some screen caps of it. Yeah. I love stuff like this because I I love any book that I can enjoy as an adult along with my kid. I I am a firm believer that a book doesn't matter what genre a book is. If it's good, it's good for anybody who's going to read it. So even though this is a picture book aimed at children, because it is so good, like, you know, not just because of the art, but because it is a entertaining read. It's good for anybody who's going to sit down and read it. Again, obviously, being a kid who grew up in the 90s, I was a huge X-Files fan. So being able to have these characters relate to my three-year-old is, is fantastic. It's a lot of fun. That is one of the things I look forward most to, is just seeing the things that 30 years later my son will also relate to and bond that I did is going to be really really fun I look forward to it I look forward to moving past Frozen and moving into books like The X-Files Earth Children Are Weird oh yeah I saw your wife posted about how your son is obsessed with Frozen he and is I'll warn you obsessed. now it does not end I know I have not I've certainly not gotten to the other side of it and my daughter has been watching since she was very little, and Frozen is still on quite heavy rotation in my house. Does not go away. That's got its own spooky elements, too, with the big ice monsters. Yes. And dark Frozen castles. There's actually a lot of really good stuff going on in Frozen. Yes. He... I prefer... I 
I prefer Frozen 2. I think Frozen 2 is a lot better. I prefer Frozen 2. He is warming to Frozen 2, but I agree. It's got a lot of good, spooky, intro to spooky elements, I would call them. I mean, again, mostly, it's mostly Olaf, right? You know, kids love Olaf. No, he doesn't care about Olaf. No? He is enamored with Elsa, and he thinks... Anna is like his best friend. Oh, that's cute. It is adorable, but the Olaf parts are when he, he comes to check on us. <laughs> it's like, oh, the snowman's on the screen. I don't, I couldn't care less about the snowman. Yeah. Oh, it's Olaf's song. I'm gonna go get some snacks from Daddy. Like, oh, wait, hold on. Let it goes on. I gotta get back. It's, it's really fun. He doesn't like any movies that have like monsters as the villain yet he's into things where man is the villain but still has like spooky elements like frozen Mm -hmm. so uh we're looking for similars because it's hard you put on something like moana or something and he's good for a while but you get to like the giant crab and he like has a meltdown but you know (laughs) people being evil that's fine okay so he's he's okay with things that don't challenge his perception of the world yeah, so far, he's just an average white man. Yeah, I mean, he's he's a baby. He's literally a baby, <laughs> Steve. <laughs> I know. There's so much you can expect out of him. Uh, but I do always enjoy these books where they're taking an old, you know... The, I I am a one for nostalgia, so I do appreciate any time they're taking these nostalgia properties and turning them into something that you can enjoy with your kids. Obviously, they know the audience, because... They're not selling this book. This book wasn't made to sell to my daughter. This book was made to sell to me to give to my daughter. And it was successful, very successful in that, right? But because it is also so enjoyable to read, you know, I don't mind that I was so I would I don't mind that I was marketed to in such a way. It's fine with me. Oh, absolutely. The same thing. That's why we own the Buffy book. My wife bought that immediately, and I'm excited to read it with my son. I'm very excited to bring my son to that. Have you read it? Have you read it yourself yet? She has. I have not. I did not know it existed until we heard you were doing this, and then she was like, oh, we have the Buffy one. Oh, you should sit down. I mean, sit down and read it. Sit down and read all of your kids' books. There's a couple of really... There's so many fantastic children's storybooks that I will sit down and just like, I will sit down and read them. You know, it's, it makes it much easier for her to read stuff if I'm enjoying it because I will sit down on my big comfy chair and I'll pull up one of her storybooks and she'll be like, Oh, what are you reading? I'll be like, Oh, I'm reading, I'm reading this storybook and she'll want to get in on it with me. That's great. I can't wait for that. He brings me books. 20 times a day and i read a page or two and he wanders away so we're trying he's getting better at it i mean again also a baby short tensions man yeah he's 14 months old i can't Uh, wait yeah again can't uh that's 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 probably all i have to say on this book it's it's a it's a gorgeous book if you have kids who listeners if you have kids who are in the Three, you know, three and up, I would say, is a good age for this. Definitely check out the Pop Classics books. Absolutely check out Children Are Weird if you're an X-Files fan. Yes. And uh, check out Bruce Coville. I mean, the My Teacher's an Alien book, very fun. But he is most known for his Big Book of Monsters, uh, Big Book of Thrills and Chills, Big Book of Ghosts. You know, he has a whole series of them that are much more direct competitor to Goosebumps, just full of, like, short, spooky stories. And I'm sure we will get to them in one episode, but I'm glad we were able to kind of expand past his norm in this and kind of hit the alien category, which I never consider innately spooky, but definitely, definitely has its place. Oh, I think I think aliens can be totally spooky. I, I mean, th- think of the movie Alien. Alien is a horror movie as much as it is a sci-fi movie. Well, that's the the line between scary and spooky and creepy. Um, sometimes I feel like aliens are more scary or are more creepy, and they're less spooky. But I think in both of these instances, we were able to really find some fun spookiness. Mm-hmm. Oh, absolutely. 
Anything uh makes me almost wish I it all makes me almost wish I still had a commute because these would be great things to have like on my phone and I could read while I'm commuting, but I don't um never getting on a bus again, I've decided after COVID. I mean that is a hundred and twenty percent fair. I drive for my commute when I do go in, so I'd have to get the books on tape and I don't know about children's books on tape. That might be, you know, counterintuitive. <laughs> Oh, I think it would be fun. I mean, they have to exist. I'm sure they do. Well, for, like, my teacher is an alien, it could work. But a children's book like you read couldn't translate. No, no, that you would want to have on, like... You know what? I think for this, I wouldn't even want to have it on a phone or a Kindle or something. I think that's definitely something you want, the, the paper in your hand. Yes. Yes. I mean, one of my son's favorite things about books is turning the pages and looking at the new pictures. Yeah, I think we got a couple of good picks this week. I hope everybody goes out and um, checks these books out. Yeah, highly recommend. At least mine is much older, but it doesn't feel dated because the kids are young enough that they wouldn't have cell phones anyway, typically. Um, (laughs) Oh, God, I hadn't even thought about that. Well, that's the thing. Like, so much stuff that came out in this time period, you're like, okay, this... These are not modern day problems. They have the internet. They have this and that. But, you know, none of that would have helped them here. And they didn't have access to that stuff anyway due to their age. So it's one of the the few things where you're not like, okay, this is a period piece. Anything else to add or do we say good night? No, I think this is a good place to sign off. I will say that you should check us out on social media. So you can see some of the um, pictures of the stuff we're talking about. You can find us as RT Spirits Pod on Instagram and Twitter. You can see some of the stuff that we've been talking about here today. And on Facebook, we are currently... <laughs> we're trying our, to fix our name. RYS Podcast. Still... It will not let us fix our name. We are... we're negotiating but as of now we are rys podcast on facebook if you'd like to follow us uh we'll update it so you'll recognize what it is i promise we'll get it fixed it was just that we had to change our name so many times in a short period and facebook was like you're changing your name too many times in a short period and we were like that's fair so uh check us out figure it out (laughs) yeah We would love to have you there. We're going to be posting uh, some pictures of the things we're talking about. So if you really don't want to have to Google anything, just follow us and you'll see what we're talking about in your feed. Yeah, and I hope everybody gets their COVID shots like Steve and I did. Yes. Uh, So you can get back, so we can all get back to doing all this stuff together. Then when we, when this explodes and we do the convention circuit, we can see all of you. And then we'll see all of you at the, at the, the Providence Zoo. Oh, yeah, come meet us there. We're not going to tell you when we're going to be there, because it would be really weird. That would be really Um, weird, but, but, you know, look for us. If you know what we look like. I mean, our face is on the cover. Oh, that's true. We're exposed. Uh, Our faces faces four years ago are on the cover. Oh, yeah, that's true. That is an old picture. That is an old picture. Maybe we can update our picture when we see each other. That's a good idea. We should definitely do that. All right, tune in in two weeks. We will be covering vampires. <laughs> vampires. They all look like this. They do in what you're covering. <laughs> vampires. We'll give them two weeks to think about that. And <laughs> until then, uh, we say goodbye. This has been Raising Spirits. Thanks for joining us. See you next time.